What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Hermit Pack on the Hermitcraft server. Oh, yeah, guys. So, we were talking about my wings being invisible, being transparent, and being solid, not transparent. Yeah. So, you guys have told me in the comments what actually is going on. So, apparently, if you are not holding something, yeah, your wings become transparent there. I guess translucent. I'm not sure the correct word, but if you're holding something, you can't see through them anymore. <laughs> So that's a thing. I guess that solves that mystery. Yeah, I wasn't sure what was causing that. Now we know. I I think you guys said that was a bug in 1.10. So it's not something like a mod interaction or anything like that. So anyway, it's good to know. It's good to know. So things that I've been doing since last episode. I uh, Let's see. I let their blaze spawner going. We set up the blaze over here before. And we only collected something like 100 or 200 blaze rods or something along those lines, right? Blaze rods are like one of the best items that you can toss to the endo flame for Batania to make mana. And I've been using coal blocks because we just didn't have a lot of blaze rods. So I decided, you know, let's click some blaze. Uh, so I left the blaze spawner going overnight and we finally ran out of power. <laughs> Having that blaze spawner going for less than 24 hours does in fact drain uh, one of our ultimate gas tanks. Where's the blaze rods? Right here. So we got 15.1 thousand blaze rods now, which is awesome. Uh, I didn't even check the experience. 6.6 thousand. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> letting that go overnight does in fact drain an entire tank of gas. Yeah. I wasn't sure like if we'd have stuff left over or whatever. I did swap this one out and I had the blaze going for a little while, but then I turned it back off because we really don't need it going now. Yeah. We've collected a lot. So anyway, I uh, swapped this back out <laughs> and I put the new one outside or I guess the used one outside to fill back up. And I was looking at what we had over here and I was like, you know, we have like a uh, chest where we're storing the seeds and the wheat. Yeah. And then those are being used by the crusher or whatever to turn into the biofuel. I think somebody had mentioned before in the comments where a few people said, why don't we just set up quantum storage for the seeds and the wheat? It's a good idea. So that's what I did. We got the wheat over here. We got the seeds over here. So now our farm is pretty much just constantly going all the time. It's not just going until we're full up on gas. Yeah, we're always going to be collecting the seeds and the wheat. So, yeah, we'll be able to have a lot of stuff going. Another thing we could do to make this a little bit better, I guess, is to constantly collect this biofuel in another quantum storage. That might be something that I add a little bit later. Because, yeah, it seems like when we're making the, the ethylene gas, we're waiting on our crusher. Even though the crusher has, like, all the speed upgrades in it. Yeah, we're still waiting on the crusher to make the biofuel to get used in our PRC to turn into the ethylene. So that might be something that I do. But anyway, uh, we now have a large supply of wheat. And I was thinking, you know, since we have a large supply of wheat, I kind of want to get into Batania. You can make mana in Batania from food, right? So we could take wheat, turn it into toast, or yeah, turn it into bread, and take that bread and turn it into toast. So that might be something worth doing. I've already started a little bit into Batania. Like I was working on it a little bit yesterday. So I started with the uh, the gourmet flowers, the food flowers. Yeah, we were using the um, the endo flames, I think. Let me see if I can find those. The endo flames. Yeah, these guys right here. We were using these guys, which, I mean, they work okay. They're not bad. They produce mana. You throw down some kind of furnace burnable fuel. They, they eat it up and they start producing mana, right? But they do it kind of slowly. They're not that great. I mean, they're a great stepping stone between like the um, the day bloom and going to something like this. They're a great stepping stone between those. But yeah, like the uh, the gourmet flower is so much better. In fact, I made a few more of those, and then I turned them into the floaty ones. Yeah, we were experimenting a lot of these in the Infinity Evolved Skyblock playthrough that I did on the live streams. Um, G O U R. <laughs> so I ended up making a few of these. And then I realized, you know, after I made up like five of those, I was like, you know, I think only one of these gourmet flowers will work. Not with just this mana spreader, but the upgraded mana spreader. And we haven't even like started doing the elven portal and all of that stuff. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of what I want to do today. <laughs> I want to work on a little bit of Batania. I want to. Did that just ruin my flower? No, we got it back. That's weird. Turn into like a floating poppy or something. Uh, I want, yeah, I noticed that the textures have been changed on this. I think I saw that in the change log from the last time that I used Batania that, um, yeah, the textures were more simplified. So they cause less of a frame rate lag or something. I don't know. 
Uh, gotta, gotta sleep. Have fun, guys. See you, peeps. Bye, Biffa. Yeah, so anyway, we need to <laughs> upgrade uh, our mana spreader. So we need to get the elven portal set up and all that kind of stuff. So things that might, things that have been changed in Batania, like the mod keeps getting updated. Like this little thing right here says, Batania has changed as last you used it in this instance. So yeah, uh, <laughs> the mod author is currently working on Batania right now, making it better and making improvements and changes. So things are going to be different a little bit, probably not drastically, but I did want to start checking out some of this stuff. So we wanted to get to the Elven portal, right? So in order to do that, we have to do this portal to Alfheim, which is not that complicated. Uh, you can see right here, that requires eight living wood blocks. So you just put the wood around the pure daisy, the white daisy or whatever. You need three glimmering living wood, which I believe is just glowstone on the living wood. So that's not bad. And then one El Elven gateway core, which is the harder part, I do believe. I can never spell Elven right whenever I try and spell that. <laughs> Uh, so we need a Terra Steel in order to do that. In order to get Terra Steel, we need Terra Steel Ingot, which turns into nine of those nuggets. And the Terra Steel Ingot itself does not show a recipe here. <laughs> okay, so I guess Batania and JEI don't have integration here. So we can go, uh, where is it? The search. I know how to do it myself. I'm just trying to see if we can find it in here. Index. Terra Steel. Let me see if I can find it again. The Terra Shatterer? No, that's not what it is. Anyway, we need to put <laughs> Mana Steel, Mana Pearl, Mana Diamond on this guy over here. Not the Spark, on the Terrestrial Agglomeration Plate. I think is how you say that. And then, yeah, we got Sparks here that are linking our Mana Pool over here, so that transfers the Mana way faster. So let's go ahead and do that. So we got a Mana Pearl here. You just throw a Ender Pearl into the Mana Pool, converts it to the Mana Pearl. Uh, we need Mana Steel, and then... So no, it is not a mana powder. It is a mana diamond. So mana steel, mana pearl, mana diamond. You throw those on the terrestrial agglomeration plate or whatever. Yes, and then you will make terra steel provided you have mana. But as it turns out, we don't have enough mana here. Mm -mm. So I've kind of set up like a small little automation kind of a thing. Dispenser, we're going to put some of our meaty stew in here. And this is easily made up. So I'm going to go ahead and make some more of this in just a little bit. But just to kind of show you guys, so just a regular dispenser pointed onto the flower. The flower is connected to the mana spreader. Mana spreader shoots the mana into the mana pool. Pretty easy setup. We're going to be using a timer from RF Tools. So this, you can change the delay. This just does a single tick pulse every 120 ticks, which is 20 ticks is one second. So what is that? Like five seconds worth? Anyway, something like that. So we can just go ahead and point that right like that. And that will go ahead and shoot a piece of food onto the flower, which starts producing mana. Now this will shoot before it's done shooting, but it's, it has like three or four seconds delay before it, like from when it eats the food to when it starts producing. So I guess it's got digested or something. So as you can see, it is shooting it. There is a little pause and then it starts shooting the mana. So we are not shooting it too fast. And in fact, that pause right here, like that is some of the delay that we could take off of this. So we could do like probably 110 sec or 110 ticks. And that will probably make this go just a little bit faster. Let's wait for this thing to go again. We'll look at the delay once the mana beam stops shooting. See with that delay right there, that's perfectly fine. So it's not wasting any food. It's using all the mana that it has. It pauses just a little bit and then the next beam starts shooting. So yeah, that's pretty good. So we just got to wait for this thing to get half full. We can drop those three items right here on the terrestrial plate. Yep. And then we'll make our terror steel. The spark will transfer the mana over quite quickly. Yeah. And then we will be able to continue on. All right, guys. Well, we finally got enough mana in the mana pool. I just kind of AFK'd while it was doing its thing. It filled up to about three quarters of the way full. So... Yeah, as soon as this drains out, we should be ready to go here. And that should make our terror steal very, very shortly. Anytime now. There it is. Okay, so now we got our first piece of terror steel. We need the terror steel nuggets. And then we can go ahead and get the elven portal set up. Now, the only problem with this setup, as you can tell right now, is that it keeps making a clicking sound. Uh, I do believe you can actually apply a redstone signal uh, to the timer to make it stop. So, oh, I'm typing redstone. <laughs> I want a lever. Let's get a lever here. I think that makes it stop. I hope. 
It looks like it's still counting down, though. No, that does not make it stop. Uh, maybe you can't make this thing stop. Maybe redstone signal from the side? Nope. <laughs> okay, well, I guess that is one design flaw here. I guess what we could do to fix this, uh, we could set this thing back one further. Whoops. Stick this right like this. We'll put a lever right here and then put a piece of redstone dust. Uh, redstone. The lever will keep the redstone from updating, which won't do anything to the dispenser. In fact, I think we need a piece right like that in this scenario. But yeah, the timer will keep going. It'll pulse the redstone, but since it's already powered, nothing else will happen. So no more ticking sound works for me. Okay, so uh, now that we have the Terra Steel Nuggets, yeah, we can go ahead and work on getting the rest of the Elven portal set up. Uh, the Elven... Uh, what is it called? The Elven Gateway Core? Yeah, we can go ahead and make one of these. I don't know if we have enough living wood. I'll go ahead and get that all cooked up. Yeah, we'll check out the Elven Gateway. I think we're also going to need a bit more mana to start up the portal. But yeah, let me get to it and we'll be right back, guys. All right, guys. So as it turns out, yeah, we're running low on the meaty stew. So I decided to use toast. Yeah. So this has a seven number there. Seven in an in parentheses 1.2. I'm not sure how much better... Or worse that is than this. This says 8 and then 1.6. I don't know. So anyway, <laughs> uh, I filled this up full of the uh, toast. And yeah, we have our mana being ran off that for now. Filling this up, uh, we needed mana to fill up these mana pools for the elven portal. Mm -hmm. So I took some of the weed from over there at our farm, right? And then I kind of set up like just a small automation kind of a thing over here. So I fill up this chest full of wheat. Uh, you know what? I don't have any here, so I can't demonstrate it. But anyway, uh, I filled this up full of wheat. The sag mill here, here is pulling from the left, uh, putting it here, and then it's pulverizing, or I guess sag milling it into this flower from Ender.io. So we get flour, and we also get seeds. So that's ejecting to the top, right? It goes into this chest here. So you can see we have some seeds. The flour comes in here, and uh, this... The alloy smelter is set to push pull from the top, so it is pushing items that are done into the chest and pulling items that it can't smelt into its inventory. So it's taking the wheat, or I'm sorry, taking that flour, smelting into bread, pushing the bread back up here, and when that was all done, it took the bread, uh, smelted it into toast, and pushed the toast up in here. So yeah, we got a lot of toast. So yeah, you just put in wheat over here, you get toast over here. Pretty simple, pretty easy. I don't know what we can do with these seeds, though. Like, I'd have to find some way to get rid of this to make this some kind of a proper automated setup. But anyway, so now we got all of that toast to feed our mana out here, our uh, our gourmet flour to make the mana. Right. So the next thing I'd like to do is I would like to hook up a recessive spark augment to this spark. So what that would do is this mana pool fills up with mana. This spark would look for other nearby mana pools that have sparks on them that don't have any augments on them, right? So uh, we need to put some sparks over on these mana pools here. Boop. Boop. So now those have sparks on them. If it's going to render, I guess it's rendering inside of these pylons. Normally it pops up above it, but I don't know. I guess it's not doing that. Uh, so yeah, uh, we have the sparks here. Unmarked sparks. We get the recessive thing over here. We'll be able to fill up those pools automatically and remotely, I guess. So, the augments for the recessive does require pixie dust. And in order to get pixie dust, we have to put mana pearl through the elven portal. So, we have to turn the thing on before we can even do this. Uh, so, let's get to it. Uh, we'll just right click right here. That should turn the portal on. Yep, sure enough, it did. Okay, so we got things going. Now, something to note uh, the Batania has been changed. You don't have to have these mana pools in the same specific location like you used to. It says anywhere within like 11 block radius, I guess, of the portal. I just stuck them right in front there because they're kind of not in the way. So I think that's just fine. So let's grab some mana pearls. We'll get that pixie dust. Uh, wait, I can never find the, the wireless grid thing. There it is. Let's grab some of these. We will make some pixie dust. And then we should be able to make our augment. There we go. Let's grab that. And then we'll come over inside and make our augment real quick. So we wanted the recessive one done. Cool. Okay, so yeah, pretty easy. All you gotta do is just right click this recessive augment onto the spark. And it should send all of its mana that it has over to those two mana pools, draining this one and filling those two up over there. 
keeping the elven portal on, which is pretty cool. I like it. Only problem is we will just won't have any mana over here until these things fill up, which might take a little bit of time, but that's fine. Cool. So now we got that done. We can start taking other things like our living wood, throw living wood in here, and that should give us this dream wood, which will allow us to upgrade our mana spreader to the next tier, which means it will move mana faster, which means we can turn the dispenser on to a faster delay, which means we make mana all together faster, fill this thing up quicker. So it seems like something I'm going to do next. Uh, let's take a look at the mana spreaders. So the elven one is the one we're going to do now. So it also requires elementium ingots, which is two mana steel through the portal makes one of those. Okay. So let's grab some mana steel. Uh, I don't know. Let's just do eight. I guess should be fine. Should give us four of those ingots. Cool. All right. So we got that. And let's go use our crafting grid in here. Come on, Ender IO armor. Yeah, the elytra on here, like I said, does kind of get in the way sometimes. Uh, no, we don't want to do that one. That's the final tier. We just need this one. I guess I'll do a yellow petal. Should be just fine. Cool. So we'll grab that. And I think I'm going to turn this off so it stops shooting out more food. We'll wait for this thing to completely finish. think we're done yeah all right let's break this spreader so i did make myself a composite mana lens of potency and velocity so you make the mana lens potency you make the mana lens velocity then you can put two of those in the crafting grid with a slime ball i used a green slime ball i believe it combines both of them so that means that we shoot more mana faster at a time i'm sorry we shoot more mana at a time and the mana beam goes faster since the mana spreader is right up against the pool i don't know if that really matters or not but yeah, that's like the fastest we can get mana out of these mana spreaders is by doing that. Then we'll go ahead and point that directly here and we'll apply the mana lens to this guy. Like so, if we turn this back on, we should notice that the delay between the mana bursts is a lot longer now. So we should be able to increase the timer. Yeah, look at that. It only shoots for like a second. Okay, so we need like half this, so probably bring this down to 50 or something. Or maybe even lower. Or actually, you know what? Maybe we're going too fast now. Maybe this does have to be a pirate. Let's bring this up to 70. I feel like we're putting too much food into this flower, like it's just destroying it. The way these flowers work, you give it food. And if you give it food too quickly, it just eats it and doesn't do anything with it. But yeah, I think maybe we're going to need more mana spreaders over here or something in order to actually get this thing going. Uh, let's go ahead and right click on this. Yeah, see, it only gets mana for like, I don't know, a second or two. And then it just immediately dumps it all. That's pretty quick. Okay, well, I'm going to work on this for a little bit. Let these mana pools fill up. Figure out the correct... Uh, timing for this and we'll be back guys All right guys, well, it looks like I found the perfect amount of time to do for this. Whoa, those Pieces of toast went flying didn't they? I don't know what that was all about. Anyway, we got this set up to a 70 tick delay. Yep um, I added in a few more dispensers and a few more of the floating flowers uh, Each one of these flowers has its own elven mana spreader and each of the elven mana spreaders has the velocity and potency lenses yeah, I've been kind of doing some stuff over here, and I just got done making some Terra Steel to kind of use up the mana so we can see how fast that's refilling. So if we come over here and look at one of these mana pools, like you can see it filling up pretty quickly, uh, which is pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah, that is splitting between two of them, so, you know, it doesn't look like this is filling up fast, but it's only going half the speed because it's filling up two at the same time, right? Uh, anyway, I think the ultimate goal, what I want to do, is move this whole thing over by our farms that we already have set up over here making wheat yeah i want to take this wheat you know i thought we would have had more than that by now but i guess not why do we have so few oh you know what it did take some wheat and i turned it all into toast but yeah anyway i want to take some of this wheat <laughs> uh i want to turn it into toast i want to set up our our uh, gourmet flowers over there and start making mana and i want to store it in large quantities over here so we'll fill up a bunch of mana pools put sparks in all of them yeah, they will just store our mana for future use. I think that's probably going to be 
the best thing to do since we already have like our wheat production set up over here it just kind of makes sense to move our gourmet flowers over here that are going to be using this stuff. So I need to get myself a sag mill, a second one. I need to get myself another uh, alloy smelter, I guess, is what we're going to use. We could use practically any type of furnace, really. It doesn't have to be the alloy smelter. Um, so, yeah, we'll figure that out. But, yeah, this just is so good, especially with the torturinos on here. <laughs> just speeding that up a little bit. Uh, it is so good just putting the wheat in here and just washing it, turn all the way over into toast, and then having enough left over to fill up those dispensers out there so yeah that's our next goal like i said i'm probably going to use up all the mana that we have to make more terra steel uh then we're gonna move all of this stuff over there set it up so we'll have the production from wheat crop to toast to giving it into the food flowers into mana so that's gonna be pretty awesome so we'll get right to that and we'll be back guys all right guys well i've spent some time here i got things moved around made some other things so let me kind of show you through uh, our automated toast production. Yeah, so this quantum storage unit right here, this is the one that contains our wheat. Yeah, so we have our sag mill here pulling from the right-hand side into its inventory. It's making the flour and the seeds. It's ejecting all that up into this chest up atop. Yeah, so you can see we got a lot of flour up here, but no seeds. Mm hmm. So on the back of this chest, we have a item conduit that's extracting all the time seeds which is going to our main item conduit network that we have over here and that will put the seeds into this quantum storage unit uh because of the filter right here it's the only place that that will go in so yeah when we get seeds in this chest it gets extracted out put it right over into here so the only thing that gets left in this chest is just flour uh when the sag mill runs out of room like it is right now i can't really do anything because there's seeds in here yeah uh, it'll just kind of wait until there is room. So like when one of these stacks gets pulled out and, uh, smelted. Yeah. That's when the seeds will be able to go in there and then those will get put over into that quantum storage. Anyway, uh, this guy right here, we are pushing the wheat from this chest. I believe it is filtered. Oh, you know what? I don't have that filtered. I should probably have that filtered. I don't think seeds can go in here. So I guess that doesn't matter. But anyway, the flower is being pushed into here. This is cooking it. It's pushing it over into a second sag mill. I decided to do two sag mills. I think it's just easier overall. So yeah, we got two sag mills. One's doing bread, one's doing toast, and then that's ejecting it over into this chest. Right, so underneath here, we have item conduit, which is going underneath the ground to the bottom sides of these dispensers and filling them all up with toast, right? So we got the same setup we had before, so all I gotta do is just flip this lever. This timer will, every 70 ticks or so, uh, eject a piece of food onto our gourmet flowers. Each one of those is connected to its own mana spreader. Yeah, and the uh, spark on this mana pool right here has the recessive, which is going to start filling up over here into these mana pools. Right. So now, <laughs> after all of that, we're probably going to set up our Terra Steel production right here, and we're probably going to want to have the dominant spark on there. And the dominant will only pull from the unmarked sparks. And this recessive only pushes the mana to the unmarked ones. It just kind of keeps it separated. Otherwise, you have all nine of these pushing to this plate. And then this one right here, instead of trying to fill up those, it's filling up those and going over. I don't know. I, I guess it doesn't really matter. But that's probably just the way we're going to have that set up uh, regardless. Uh, I also sit over here the imaginary time block. I removed all of the soil that we had down below because it's not necessary. I have this item, or I guess energy conduit right here, set to active without signal, inserting power. So when this redstone signal is on, it stops the power going into this thing, which stops the imaginary time block. Uh, otherwise, there is no redstone control for it that I can tell. If it's getting power, it's always going to be running. I have the farming station down here set to ignore, or I guess always active. So it's always going to be trying to farm this stuff. Yeah, and the stuff always goes over into our quantum storage, which we have, like, basically unlimited storage, right? So we can flip this lever, grow all of our crops really fast. If we need a lot of this stuff really quickly, yeah, <laughs> this is a lot better on the frame rates than having all those green particle effects. I can probably get rid of the greenhouse glass, too, but I think for right now, I think it's going to be just fine. So, yeah, we'll just flip that, let it grow naturally, or I guess with the greenhouse glass... Yeah, and then we can continue to get the stuff and continue to uh, fill up our gas tanks and all of that. So I'm pretty happy with this setup so far. Uh, I guess we can go ahead and flip the lever here. 
just make sure everything's working. I haven't really given this a test, but I'm sure it's going to work because we kind of had this thing already set up previously, right? So yeah, there we go. All the mana pools are now receiving mana. The only thing we don't have set up though, yeah, this is going to be a kind of an important thing. There's no way for this thing to turn off, so it's going to constantly be using food regardless if the mana pools are full. So what I normally would do is underneath this mana pool here, this is our one that's like providing mana to all these other ones. You can do a comparator signal off the mana pool and that will give you the signal strength based on how much mana is in there. So I'll probably end up hooking up a comparator, checking to see if that mana pool is around like four or something. And if so, it will send a redstone signal instead of that lever, the manual on and off for the timer. Well, yeah, we'll just send a signal over there and power this entire redstone line so it'll stop sending food. I think that's probably how we're going to have to do that. Yep. Yeah. And that'll be automated. So as soon as we start using mana from here, it'll draw mana from this center pool, which will turn off the comparator signal and it'll continue to produce mana. So it's a pretty nice way to automate this whole system. But yeah, as far as that goes, as far as like telling it when it's full, we don't have that yet. We will. And then it'll be 100% automated. But I think that'll be for another day. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this has turned out so far. Uh, we still have the oven portal over here, which I have turned off since we're probably not going to be using it for a while. I just broke this block and stuck it back there. When you turn it on, it does use a decent amount of mana out of these mana pools. But if you leave it overnight or whatever, it's probably going to use more. So, yeah, that's why I have done this. Yeah, we'll have to figure out like the proper place for all of these things. This guy definitely needs to be moved over towards those mana pools because that is where all of our mana is <laughs> for when we make mana steel and do some other things within Batania a little bit later. I guess we will stick that maybe over here somewhere. Kind of makes sense that it'd be um, kind of in line with this since it's three wide, right? And maybe we'll move it right here. Yeah, so we'll do that. Uh, let me grab one of those blocks. Like so. Okay, good. Then we could just do the living rock and the lapis. And finally, the plate and the spark. Boop. Cool. So like I said, we'll probably get the dominant spark on here. It doesn't really matter, but I'll probably just do that anyway. So this pool only sends to here and these only send to here. Seems like a good idea to me. Anyway, guys, I think we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Had a lot of fun messing around with the Batania stuff. There are some things that are changed. And there's a whole lot of stuff in Batania that I haven't even messed with. But yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to progressing in this mod a bit. This is just the start, just to get like the power system up and running for it. But yeah, I definitely want to check out some more things. But anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.